In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to make a epoxy resin cast award. So when I first started getting into this, I realized that I wanted to be able to make cool little memorabilia awards for people. And specifically, I work at a company that designs speakers. And I wanted to be able to take our latest speaker design and embed it in an epoxy pyramid like this in order to give it out to all of the contributors that help make this product happen. Now, you can put whatever you'd like inside of this epoxy pyramid, whether it be something that's 3D printed, like this, or a little trinket, or a bit of memorabilia, or an item that has some sort of sentimental value. But I will be using this uh, 3D printed model right here. So, in order to do this, there's a couple of precautions we're going to have to take. And the first one is about messiness. So, the big takeaway with cleaning up your mess with this epoxy resin is that A without B or B without A is never going to dry. Let's explain what that means. Epoxy resin is a two-part resin with a one-to-one -one mix, meaning I put one ounce of part A to one ounce of part B to equal two ounces of this hardened clear material. If part A never meets part B, it will never cure and it will also never dry. So it will always be gooey on whatever you get it onto. So for a precaution, what I like to use is just plastic packaging. Whether you just got a TV for the holidays or a large appliance of some sort, you can use whatever plastic non-porous uh, packaging that was in it to cover your space and a little bit of painter's tape to secure that down so it doesn't move. If you don't have anything like this, cardboard just like this will do just fine. We just wanna create a layer between what you're working with and your actual work surface so that this isn't always going to be covered in resin. Now that we have that out of the way, there's one more big requirement in order to create stuff like this, and that is room temperature. You have to have a room temperature that is at least 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really important because this resin uses heat to cure. Now, the chemical reaction that happens creates heat, but if it's an in an environment that's too cold, it actually won't cure correctly and will always be slightly soft, and the bubbles won't always come out of it. So those are two things to note. Now, it's just below that level for me, so I use two little mini space heaters. I think these were $7 a piece. And I'll start this up before the project, shoot it at the resin and the mold, and we're good to go. So now that we know about the risk, the mess, and what we do to keep it off our work area, how do we keep it off of us? Well, in order to do that, we will use just normal non-latex gloves here and some paper towel. And if you do get any on you, you can use just some standard rubbing alcohol to pull that epoxy off. Soap and water really doesn't do it very well. Now that we have all of that out of the way, what are all of these different things that I have on this table? And how do we put them together to create this? Well, there's a couple different steps. There's about four steps, actually. The first thing we need to do is talk about the mold. Then we have to talk about preparing the thing that we're going to put in the mold. Then we're gonna mix our resin to set this in the top half of the mold. And then finally, once that's cured, we mix the second half of the resin, pull out our suspension piece, you'll see what that means in a minute, and pour in the rest of the resin. Once that's done, you just wait about two days and you get a perfectly clear, nice award with your piece inside of it. So we're going to break this down and go step by step. If this looks a little daunting, it's a lot of things I've learned here, and that's why we have so many items on this table. But I'm going to take you through it step by step so that you can go from ordering a resin kit off Amazon and the links below to creating a really, really cool award just like this. The next step we have to look at is how to situate the model we want to suspend in our award into the mold. So let's first look at this mold. 
These are about 20 bucks on Amazon, which at first I thought was a little pricey, but after using it, I realized that this can be used over and over and over again. So it comes with a silicone inner piece and then a hard plastic outer piece that are the same shape. So basically how this works, is so you set your silicone piece inside and then that is what becomes the award. So all the resin gets put in here and then once it cures, it cures upside down. So on one of my previous attempts, I just thought that I could situate the model inside of the award and it would float there while it all cured. And I'll throw in a shot right now of that not working out so hot. So the first order of business doesn't have anything to do with resin, but has everything to do with how do I get this to be stuck perfectly where I want it inside of the mold when there's no resin in there yet. The answer is a little bit of super glue and a piece of wire. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna super glue this wire to the model. Then we're gonna clamp it to a piece of wood or something over the mold to hold it in place while we pour our first resin. So let's do that right now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to attach a uh, unbent uh, paper clip, this is a thicker paper clip, to our item that we want to suspend in the resin. Now, keep in mind that you can use anything that you want to suspend in the resin. I'm just using this uh, cool little uh, speaker model. So, uh, the first thing we want to do is grab these two products. Um, this is super glue. I find the Gorilla Glue Blue does really uh, well and then what they call kicker or uh, accelerator for CA glue. So CA glue is another word for super glue um, and this makes it set instantly so you don't have to hold it for very long. So uh, to do this we're going to uncap this. We're going to have some paper towel nearby for any of the overspray because you don't want to get this on your hands and then uh, eat or anything like that. And we're gonna open up our super glue and add just a little bit of super glue on that leading edge there. Just like that. We cap our super glue so it doesn't dry out. And then before you spray, you're gonna wanna place whatever you're using to suspend the item. Uh, and then we just give it a We'll spray there and wait about 15 seconds while the chemical reaction happens and it hardens. And we can see it's now connected, but we're still going to give it a little bit because, and there we go. You can see that it is now stuck to the wire. So the next step is going to be to clamp this to a piece of wood or something above our mold so that we can suspend it correctly. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is to suspend the item that we want to put into the mold in the mold like this. And so what I found uh, works the best is actually to use just like a, a spare piece of wood or uh, anything that can sit across your mold like this. It doesn't have to be a piece of wood uh, exactly like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna clamp this to the piece of wood so it's holding it perfectly in the center there. Now it's important with this mold that we wanna get it fairly deep in the mold um, so that we don't have to use as much resin to cover it. If I were to hold it up here, then we would have to have a giant pyramid with just this just at the bottom. So we're gonna uh, keep it further into the mold there. And to clamp it, I like to use these DeWalt um, little six inch uh, wide clamps here for that purpose. So I'm gonna clamp this up. Get that in there. Spread the clamp out. And the height is the most important thing while you're clamping. We can shift around the piece of wood later to 
get it exactly how we want it. So now that that's nice and clamped, we can see that that isn't going anywhere. And we can set it right into the mold, just like that. So now the next step, since we've clamped it, is making sure it's centered exactly how we want it. And to do this, um, I'm just gonna eyeball on the left, right, and front to make sure that it is centered in the mold. Now, if you're using a bigger object, this will probably a bit be a bit easier. But if you're using a smaller object like this, uh, then it can be a little tricky to make sure you're perfectly centered. All right, now that we know our mold is perfectly centered, we can adjust the wire if we need to twist or shift it in any way to make sure that the object is exactly in the orientation we want it to be. So the next step is actually to mix up our resin that's gonna set the bottom of the, of the um, item that we wanna suspend. So what we wanna do is we wanna fill up enough that we're securing the bottom so we can take this wire out and this clamp out and then uh, fill the rest up. So now comes the fun and uh, slightly messy part of this situation, and that is mixing up our resin. So I will link in the description to this resin. Um, it comes with part A and part B, and it has a 40 minute working time, which means if there's something you need to change or you wanna add colors or anything like that, you have 40 minutes from the time you mix the resin to the time where it is hard and way too viscous to make any changes to it. So uh, the first step is we wanna see what comes with this resin in the box. And what comes with this resin in the box are some little measuring mixing cups. One pair of gloves. You're going to want to get some more gloves if you're going to make more than one of these. And some little popsicle sticks for mixing. Now, what I like to add to this is just some clear um, solo cups here. Uh, you can, they don't have to be clear, but I find the clear is easier to see when it's fully mixed. So the next thing we need to do and you need to do is figure out how much liquid uh, this mold is going to hold in order to cover your object. Now it's pretty easy for me uh, because of, I've made this a few times. I know that it's right around um, 400 uh, milliliters to fill up the entire mold. So that means my first pour, we want to do 200, and the second pour, another 200. Now, these mixing cups that the resin comes with uh, have little milliliter marks on them. So what I suggest you do is fill up this mold with water to the point that it covers your model, and then pour the water from this mold into a mixing, a normal mixing cup or these mixing cups, and then you can see how much resin you're gonna need. That way we don't mix up too much resin and we also have enough resin, we, we don't have too little. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these mixing cups and I'm gonna measure out 100 milliliters of part A and part B and dump it into this larger clear Solo cup. But before I do anything, I'm gonna put my gloves on because this stuff is really hard to get off your hands and it doesn't dry unless it's cured, which can be uh, quite a hassle if you pick up an item that only has part A or part B on it a week or so after uh, it's been on there because it's still going to be gooey and get into everything. So I'm getting my gloves on here. We want to make sure we have our paper towel standing by in case we do have any spills or, or messes like that. And then today, just to show the possibility um, of what we can do, and I'll link these again down below, we're gonna add a little bit of color into our resin. And they are special uh, resin colorant dyes that work well with epoxy resins that you can pick up. Um, they come in all different colors. This kit has 15 different colors. Um, and we're just gonna add a little bit of blue to our resin to take it from this nice clear award to a slightly blue tinted award. Now, since we're doing two pours, you could feasibly do two different colors, but I'm just gonna stick with the one color. 
And it's gonna be important that I know how many drops of color I put in so that they match. Because if I put too many in the top versus not enough in the bottom, I'm gonna have a slightly different color and you'll see that in the final uh, piece. So, um, right here I have the blueberry and the blue. I think I'm just gonna use the blue today. So we wanna shake these up. And that's nice and mixed up. Now I'm gonna take my part A. Doesn't matter if you do part A or part B first. I'm gonna measure 100 milliliters in here and it's this really goopy, viscous stuff here. And it doesn't matter if there's bubbles in it while you're mixing or while you're pouring because the curing process will actually take all the bubbles out uh, with heat. So there is part A. This bottle's just about empty. And what I'm gonna do is take part A and pour it into the Solo Cup. I wanna make sure we get all of it. So to make sure, we're gonna take our popsicle stick and once we have most of it out of there, we're just gonna scrape the sides and we can see all that extra that was still in there because it's so viscous. There we go. And I'm gonna clean off that popsicle stick just like this. Set it back down. And now we're going to measure out 100 of part B. And there we go. There's 100 of part B. And that bottle's almost empty. Now we're going to take the solo cup and pour part B in there, just like that. Wait until it's almost empty, and then take our popsicle stick and scrape out all the extra. Just like that. Oh, got a little extra drip there. Okay, and now, because we're gonna do uh, the colorant, now is the time to add the colorant so we can make sure it's stirred into to both parts equally. Um, again, uh, you don't have to use colorant. You can go for the clear look, but we're gonna add a little bit of colorant. You can also add a little bit of glitter here as well. There is resin glitter uh, to give it a little extra shine in there if you're doing something uh, extra special. Um, but here I'm just going to add one, two, three, let's go for four drops of this colorant. We can always add more, but we want to make sure we know how much we've added. And then we just take our, our popsicle stick here. We want to mix the two parts together. Now in the manual for the resin, it says mix them until you see no more streaks. And I think what it means by streaks, because it doesn't really have any kind of picture examples, is you can see right here that the resin is not clear. It's now very opaque and you can't see through it. If you mix the uh, correct amount of time, what you'll find is that it becomes very clear. It takes about two minutes to mix, so I'll do a little uh, fast forward action here till it's done mixing. All right, it looks like it's about done mixing here, and there are bubbles in here, which is just fine. But what we're looking for to make sure we've mixed it enough is that it is now clear, and you can now see through the resin, and it looks very, very clear. It's not cloudy at all, although the there are still bubbles. So now what we want to do is we want to pour this first pour of resin in here, and then that's going to be where we stop um, for about 10 hours. We're going to need that first to cure so that we can pull off all this clamping and mounting, and then we can pour the 
rest of the resin in. Now, when you're pouring, there's nothing uh, especially uh, interesting to look out for, um, but if there are any big bubbles, if you're using a part that has a really concave underside, you can use a stir stick to try to pull the bubble out of there before it cures. But all these little bubbles, they will go away in the curing process. So I'm gonna pour this in here, just like this. And we're gonna hold it here for a minute to make sure all the resin is coming out. And we can use our, our handy popsicle stick again to try to get all that extra resin in there that sticking to the sides. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna set the cup here. We'll use this cup for the next mix as well. Set down my popsicle stick and I will zoom in here so we can see what the resin looks like. So it's been a few hours and the resin here has passed that 40 minute work time, which means it is actually pretty hard. It's not entirely cured. And now is the time that we're going to wanna to take away our clamping since that item is set in the resin. And we are going to uh, mix and then pour the rest of the resin in here to complete the award. And then we'll come back after all that's done and we'll do some final finishing touches. So what we're gonna do first is release our clamp Looks like I got a little resin on there. And pull this away and we can see that it's free standing. If the resin uh, hadn't set yet, we'd be able to push our, our item all around. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll take a look at getting this little piece off right here. All right, so now that the resin is cured, we can see that there are no bubbles anymore. So before uh, where we last left off there were quite a few bubbles but now there aren't and we can see that our our little uh, piece of paper clip here is ready to be removed. So to remove this I just give it a small twist. You can hear a little pop and then a gentle pull and there we go and it's off. So now we are ready to mix and pour the second batch in here and that will bring us up uh, to about this white mark. So you can see I've, I've done it a couple times there. Now that we have this off, it's time to mix our top batch of resin here. So we have our part A, our part B, the mixing cup, and then our actual uh, uh, mixing solo dish there. So once again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna open up either one. I'm gonna do part B first this time. And let's do 100 in there. Remember to put a new pair of gloves on as you're doing this. so you can stay protected from making an absolute mess. All right, we'll get all that extra in there. There we go. And then we'll do the same with part A. 100 again. go. Be sure to cap your resin when you're done pouring. Pour that in. And use the popsicle stick again. Get all of that in here. Now that we're done with that, I usually uh, will throw these away after I'm done with every award 
So you don't want to use this with a kind of medium cured resin for your next project. But we're going to put uh, four drips again of the blue here to match the top half die. One, two, three, and four. And once again, we're gonna mix for about two minutes until this goes from a kind of cloudy to a clear. All right, so now that we're done with the second pour, just pour right on top. And finally use the popsicle stick to get all the extra. Make sure it's all kind of uniform in there. And that is it. Now we'll come back uh, tomorrow once this is fully cured and show some of the last finishing steps that are optional. You don't need to do them, uh, but they can really take the look of the award from a really cool craft project to something that actually looks pretty professional. So uh, with that, we'll be back once this is cured. So it's been about a day since I left this to cure in here. Um, I had both little mini space heaters going, and so it is now time to Pull it out of the mold so you can see it's all nice and cured there basically what i do is just pull the silicone back and there we have it a really cool blue mold here and we have our uh, uh, little speaker all nestled right up inside there so you may look at this and think, well, that doesn't exactly look like this one. And you'd be right. So this one is much sharper right now, and that's one thing to keep in mind, is when this comes out of the mold, this edge here was just sitting on the edge of the silicone. It's gonna be very, very sharp, because it, it cured to a point where, if you can see here, I've uh, actually chamfered all of the edges of this pyramid. And it gives it this really professional looking, almost glass-esque kind of look and feel to it. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that next. And then that is the last step. And you have successfully created a resin award. So let's, uh, let's sand it. All right, so what I have here is a little knife sharpener called the Work Sharp. Um, and uh, it's a great little knife sharpener, uh, but it also has a lot of other uses. You can use it as a, a little uh, sanding uh, plane for tools or anything else. So I like to use it when I have little bits to sand on and I don't have, you know, anything too large to work with. Now, um, one thing you're going to want to do if you're going to be sanding any sort of resin or, or anything you're building is get a mask. So right now I'm wearing a mask. Have some uh, uh, spare um, paper towel around, a little bit of water um, to be able to kind of brush off the powder when we're done. And uh, the big thing to note is this is very messy. You can see it's messy all around here. So try to do it outside or in a garage or something like that. So here we go. And we can already see here, I'm taking that sharp edge off with a double bevel. So I'm sanding once here and then turning it and sanding again. That gives it a nice curve around. Now you're gonna see this is covered in this white powder. Um, that's why we have the spray bottle and the paper towel to uh, polish that up once it's complete. So now I'm gonna do uh, two passes per edge here and then a little work uh, to dull the tip there and we should be all finished. All right, so now we've got all four edges 
all four edges here and then we've uh, dulled the tip a little bit. So now we can wipe some of this powder off of here. And the last step is I just like to take a little bit of water and spray it on uh, a little piece of paper towel here. And that really helps clean off all of the surfaces from all that powder. Switch hands, clean off the bottom. And then the last step um, is just to take a little bit of air duster or something like that because you'll notice that uh, there's a bunch of little pockets here that have now collected um, that powder. And you can go further and polish these if you want to, but um, yeah, so we're going to do some air duster and we'll get that out of there. All right. You can see it's just a little bit of air dusting. It, it really takes all that off. And, and now I have these really nice chamfered edges here. It just kind of adds to the appeal of the, uh, of the award. So that is the whole process from start to finish. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and all the links to all the products I use to make this will be in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.